Getting this turned on. You've got one waiting for you. Yep, that'll be the black one. He's always the hungriest. The little boy. Hi, little boy. Are you ready for your breakfast? I think he is. Okay. Today is 22nd, and what is it? 7.30-ish? 7.45? Something like that. Okay, you first. Scale is on. This is not normal behavior. He's weird. 4.4 4 ounce. And I think you have the one without the markings that used to be black. He's the biggest pig, which has been the easiest one to feed. The others have been quite challenging. Makes it look fun and easy, but it hasn't been that way the whole time. We go up and down with our feeding battles. Yeah, I know it's it's very hard for people to understand because they are, you know, they're so cute, uh, and when they are eating, they're just absolutely adorable and wonderful to work with. But the the big problem is the vast majority of the time when you hand raise these guys, they're they're wild. They do not want to eat. And you you literally have to uh, very very gently force feed them. And I I know both of us have have uh, uh, taken as much as an hour in order to to feed these three baby rabbits. Uh, so it's it's a long long process to get these guys raised up, and of course. Uh, the baby that came in a couple of I lost weeks. Track is that four? I think that, <laughs> I think that was three. Oh, three. Number Sorry, four. didn't mean to interrupt. I just all of a sudden it's like oh, I lost count. Yeah. So that was only three. Yeah, this is four. Okay. Getting a, a full tummy. Cut them down to three feedings a day. And five is the absolute most I let them have. These are three milliliter syringe. So it's like, yep, yeah. give you a big tummy. Okay, and he was 4.4 .4 ounces to start with. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Mr. Round Tummy, you back in there. Let me write that down before I forget. Oh, 4.4 .4 ounce, that was black. We just put little markers on the ears to keep track of who's who. That was 15 milliliter. So you can see this chart. We we put the date and every time we feed them and we weigh them every time to make sure they're gaining appropriately. You're back. You don't need any more. Okay. We pull out the next one. Yeah, he's a little escape artist. If we don't watch him carefully, he'll he'll sneak out and and go hide around the kitchen somewhere. So the other ones are much more normal. They're hard to catch and they're wild. And I'm sure this one will be that way too. Mm. Okay, pink's the littlest one. And pink and blue are both girls. I, at least I think they are from when I checked. Mm -hmm. They're still young, so it's easy to make Need mistakes. To yes. Okay, so hold still. Don't go off the edge. 3.7 ounces. Let me write that down. She was 3.6 ounces last night at her 10 a.m. 10 p.m. feeding. We, like I said, it's so nice that they they're finally the last couple of days eating good enough. We're just cutting them back to three feedings a day, and so we can sleep eight hours overnight. Part of the feeding too is the syringes. These get sticky after a few uses. And it doesn't glide as easy, and when it doesn't glide easy, then they get frustrated, and then they just fight the feeding. Also, it, it takes uh, just the smallest disturbance, the smallest noise, the smallest movement, because they have a very, very strong uh, fight-or-flight instinct. And, and so they will, 
stops feeding with uh, just the littlest disturbance. I know last night I was feeding and Martin's like, how's it going? And the one I was feeding absolutely just froze up and stopped and then tried to get away. So but sometimes just talking is all it takes to... And actually, this is a, a really good example. You know, these are wild rabbits, and they're not domestics. Uh, they're not something that you can just handle and pick up. Uh, and how did we get domestic rabbits? Well, the way we got domestic wild? rabbits is it was wild rabbits oh. that, that ended up having a personality like this. And, 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 and so we breed... We ended up selective breeding for personality, and, and so we ended up with rabbits that are, are that have a, a much lower fight or flight instinct. See, in the wild, without a strong fight or flight instinct, what you have is a rabbit that ends up to be food for somebody. Uh, so the the wilder they are, the better chance they have of survival. Is that only two? Yep. <laughs> I know. It's... Well, it's still doing better than it was. I mean, it, oh yes. I yeah. guess there's sometimes it takes 20 minutes to feed one of these guys when they're being difficult, and then you have to stop and warm the formula again. And that was back when we were lucky to get six milliliters in them. You know, there were several feedings where we only got uh, barely got one yes. syringe, three milliliters in, we, into them. Well, and when we first started, we were using a one milliliter syringe, and we were doing good to get one or two of those in yeah so it's the first three days it's a struggle to keep them from losing weight um, and then then it's like they turn the corner and you think oh good it's gonna be easy and then they backslide and say no <laughs> well and th this is why we uh, we log in uh, their weights the time of day the uh, amount of food that they have uh, taken she's not even gonna take three yep. are we talking too much for you so, so it does, it is very important to keep, to keep track of everything because they, they can go downhill very, very quickly. And then the, the proper diet, this is what we're feeding them here is not milk. This is a, a hand feeding diet, uh, specifically for, for small mammals. Cottontail and squirrel and opossum seems to be yeah. the same. They like the same similar fat and protein content. There is a nutritional place that mixes up with different proteins and fats amounts for the different species. Can we finish just a little bit? And so having having the the right foods, the right kinds of syringes, the right kinds of nipples, uh, the right setup so that we can keep them uh, the, the correct body temperature. Uh, you know, there's just so many variables that we need to work on. As you can see, she's struggling with this little one now. This little one says, I've had enough. I'm not going to eat anymore. And I'm just going to being, keep refusing. Just being wild. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're supposed to be. So this is actually much, much more normal behavior for these baby rabbits. Like I said, um, both Susan and I have sat uh, right here for an hour or, or more uh, trying to feed these little guys and, and only get... Uh, yeah, maybe sure maybe two hot. or three yeah. milliliters into them, but it it's just pay, time and patience. You already had yours, Daddy. Yes, he has. Okay, let me find the blue one. And so, like like I said, this is a great example of uh, you know if if we were to want to raise cottontails uh, for pets, then we would selectively keep this one uh, because it's. It's a little more tame and and doesn't seem to have as much fear, so it's it. But the problem is it won't do as well in the wild. And and it's not legal to keep them for pets. Yeah, and it's not. It's, Our goal it's is illegal. to get them all back in the wild. Okay, here's Blue. And this is he, he gets crazy and wild too. Yep. So I always keep my hand close by to snatch them before they jump off and hurt themselves. We'll see how many he gets down before he totally panics. Goes wild. Yeah, 
And so as, as Susan says, the goal is we get them all back to the wild. Uh, if they uh, do well and, and become mature and, and raise more babies, that's wonderful. But also, uh, my goal is for them to grow up and raise babies. Yeah, but I, I know. know I know they have the same chances as any other wild rabbit. Yeah, and but the 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 flip side of that coin is that these rabbits are a major food source uh, for you know hawks and eagles and coyotes and foxes and lots and lots of other animals. You know, rely on on these rabbits as a food source, and so. At least when they're back in the wild, um, they do have the opportunity to fulfill their biological destiny, which is to be a food source. And so I know lots of people says, "Well, the rabbit's so cute, we don't want anything to happen to them," and that's and that's true. But um, what about the the eagles and the hawks and the falcons and the coyotes and all of the other animals that survive because of these animals. Let me grab pink and see if I can get more down it. So that one, mm -hmm. he ate really good. Blue, he just didn't quite get 15. What did he get, 13.5? Yeah. Let me get pink out and see if I can get have a little more. And the rabbit we released last night that was uh, six weeks old, these last three weeks of feeding it, that's you. I think. No, that's blue. I was looking yeah, for it's pink. all the way around the corner. There you go. No. The colors fade out pretty quick. Hold still. He it says it's just a little bit of, put a little bit of Sharpie marker color on the ears and could just barely see a little bit of pink on it. Um, okay, let's see if I can, if she will take a little bit more. If not, I won't force more, but I'm just hoping to see if she'll try. Come on. Says no. Okay, I'm not gonna force her. So we barely got the three milliliters, or three syringes of that. So that'd be nine milliliters. Okay. But the good thing is they are they are starting to nibble on uh, on solid food now, so they don't have to be fed. Uh, it's it's not as critical. I'll go pick you some more grasses and some more alfalfas, more weeds. Yes, and we'll get you out and release you in a wonderful spot. Where hopefully you can grow up and live a good, long, full life. Yes, you're not normal wild. Hopefully when you get released out into the wild, you will, you will run and hide like you're supposed to. Use your instincts like, like a rabbit is supposed to. Well, anyway, that's our, our little morning rabbit feeding. one makes it look easy. He really does. He has less wild instincts than the other two. The other two are really difficult and wild. Number four.
Come on. Yeah. Why is it enough for you today? Okay. Why is it enough? That's good. There's five. The other two are going to be wilder. Yep. And we'll knock everything over, including the milk. Yes, they will. Probably pink. The blue is the hardest one to, to get. You can wear, and I can tell you by the way. Yeah, I think this is pink. She's been the lightest. Four, four. She's growing nicely. Okay, pink. Good luck with that towel to wrap her in. Come on, pink. Might be good for her. You done, little pink? Guys are just getting wild. Boy, are they. That's good. That's what we want. Okay, pink. There you go. The blue one, you, well, I can't hardly hold on to him anymore. So. 15 milligrams on the black. And um, instead of 12, it would have been like 11 milligrams. Yeah. On the pink. Hi, and Black. Black again. <laughs> okay. Does I know who they are just by how hard they are to hold? Yep. Okay. And they can break themselves way easy. Yeah. Got to be real careful with them. Don't let them. Got to hold them tight enough they don't hurt themselves, but. Four seven. Okay, I'll write it down later. Yeah. Just hang on to him. Yep, that's my job. A her. I think it's a her. Mm -hmm. Shh, little blue. Do you need a towel? They are nibbling on solid food. They had a lot of solid food put in last night. But yeah, it's mostly eaten, so this may be the end of their... You got day in their black. Come on. That one's the most wild. Mm-hmm. And the hardest to feed. Yeah, he's not hardly swollen at all. Let me set this down and trade you. I'll put him in the towel and wrap him up. The difference in size, that one's just about four and a half, almost five weeks old that we've been bottle raising. This 
Smith came in today. It's about two weeks old. And when you see them together, you can see the real size difference. Much lower it is. size two week old. There's a couple of milliliters of the formula. Really doesn't want it. So we'll just have to feed him more often and make sure he doesn't lose weight. The other guys will be ready to go in the next week. Well, good evening. I'm Martin Tyne with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation. And we're going to have a little fun this evening. Come along. I've uh, got three more baby cottontail rabbits that we have uh, bottle raised over the last many weeks. And we're going to bring them out to... Uh, good cottontail rabbit country and get the little guys turned loose here. Get them back in the wild where they belong. So yeah, it's a good, good spot for the critters. Give them an opportunity to uh, fulfill their biological destiny, which we get them back in the wild whether they live a long, healthy life or, you know, a predator comes by and eats them, they will have fulfilled their purpose in life. Starting to get out to the grass. We are. It's been so dry. The habitat's been terrible. We've had a series of small thunderstorms recently, which is uh, it was very, very bad needed moisture to get a little of this grass to grow. And that's kind of a main diet for the cottontails. And right over here. There's grass and brush to hide. Yep. Cottontails seem to like a combination of, of rabbit brush, sagebrush, and then they nibble on the, uh, the new fresh green grass shoots. So that's what we've got here for them. Find some thickets they can hide in. Yeah, and a, bit, a little more grass. We've got a nice patch of green grass over here. Okay. Brush, a lot of sagebrush, fresh, fresh grass. I think this is about as good. A little more thicker brush right here. Okay, little bunnies. 
We can take off and hide. There's Ready a thick brush right up there. It's a, it's a stubborn one. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Here we go. Hi, little ones. Come on, babies. We brought a little bit of alfalfa out here for them. Some grasses that we've been feeding them on. Just pour them out, I think. Yeah. There we go. Bye-bye, little guy. Come on. Come on. Go with your brother. Go on. Brother or sister. I think there was two girls and a boy, but I'm yeah. not positive. There you go. Your new homes, kiddo. <laughs> no, you can't hide back in your box. Go on, go on, scoot, scoot, scoot. They will find hiding places. They will. Now you see why they're called cottontails. Look at those white tails they hold up. And the nice, nice things, like I said, good cover, good habitat for them. Um, we're not expecting any storms tonight, so they'll have a, a few days of, of good weather. And then we are supposed to get some more storms, which we desperately need. So hopefully by then they'll have figured out good hiding places. They disappear right under the brush there. Guys, yep. they camouflage real well. Don't even know if you can see them, but they're in there, two of them. The third one hopped away. Okay, well, I know it's not a big fancy eagle release, but it's uh, certainly a success story that we were able to bottle raise these cottontails. And cottontails and jackrabbits are very, very difficult to raise. And so anytime we can release one back to the wild is a really big success for us. So we're Well these three make four this year. It does, and we've got one more still to, to go. Yep, one more. He needs a couple more weeks with us. So and we'll nibble the dried grass there under the tree there. Well have a good evening guys, and we hope the bunnies do well. I love bunnies, so I, I hope they will grow up and and do well raise for, young yep that's the goal anyway see ya bye bye ready well good at, good evening i'm martin time with the southwest wildlife foundation our last baby cottontail of the year all raised up and ready to go back to the wild so, in there real good. Find them some bushes and grassy area. Yeah, we got a nice grassy area over here with lots of rabbit brush and sagebrush. Lots of hiding places. Yeah, this is what cottontails like. You find them in here all the time. And we've gotten some rain in the last two weeks, so I think the grass is going to grow a little bit better for them too. Yes. This one has been wilder than wild. He have fought us even on feeding him and hand raising him. Nothing tame about this guy at all. That's a good thing. And he won't come out on his own, so. Nope. And he'll disappear once you get him out. Hey, little one. I'm gonna leave you some alfalfa here for you. There you I just go. Want to hide. I just want to hide. I'm a wild rabbit. Lots of places for our little cottontail to hide. They are really cute though. They are. Yeah, this is completely different than what you were in, huh? No, when we'd have to catch him to feed him though, he'd he'd run away from us and pop straight up and even uh 
when he got tired of chasing and he was ready to fight. So he's, he's got quite the spirit. Hopefully he'll survive. Huh, Benny? At least you got a chance. You get a chance to go to the wild. Live your life. He's been eating on his own for more than a couple of weeks. And uh, we just hung, it, hung on to him until the flash floods were going to be done. We had all those monsoons coming through. There he's going. Yep. Goodbye, little bunny. Have a good life. Lots of places to hide. There's lots more cottontail in here. Yep. Well, he's got his second chance. All you can do. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.